Hola, que tal? Hello, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Welcome to a new Q&A video. We are going to explain you briefly how it works. You have a question on travel in Spain or Portugal? First, try and search if we have a video on the topic. If we have a video, leave us a question there. We will reply within 24 hours. But if you can't find a video, then leave us a question for us and we will try to help you in the next Q&A video. By the way, the next video should air around mid-April. So if you are traveling to Spain in March, do not leave us a question for the next Q&A. And now, with the help of my mobile, let's go with the questions for this second questions and answer video. Sherwina asks, Hola, hope you have a video from Madrid airport to Segovia. I'm planning to travel next year. Stay safe. And how much it will cost when you use cell phone data? Is it week or monthly to pay? Thank you. Hi, Sherwina. As far as we know, there is no direct transfer from Madrid to Segovia. You will have to take the train to Chamartin station and then take another train to Segovia. Have a look at the video where we explain how to leave Madrid airport. And as for the, your cell phone data question, it all depends on the SIM card you purchase. The store where you buy it should be able to give you advice on the topic. We have a video on the channel where we advise you where to buy a SIM card in Madrid. Maureen asks, have you got any videos on the Sagrada Familia? Maureen, we don't have yet. We want to record one, but the problem is as the Sagrada Familia is an ongoing project, every time we sit and plan on doing the video, there's a new change that makes us think, why don't we wait till the Sagrada Familia is finished to produce that video? But in the meantime, if you have any questions about the Sagrada Familia, make use of the video we have with the top attractions in Barcelona. And Maureen again, can you recommend any good flamenco shows in Madrid or Seville? We'll leave you in the description of the video links to flamenco shows in both cities. Check them out. Brian, good day, Tony. My wife and myself are planning a road trip from San Sebastian. I would like to drive all the northernmost coast of Spain, ending up in Porto. Do you have a website or book that you would recommend on how to plan that trip? Also, what rental car company do you recommend? Hi, Brian. We don't have any resources yet on the road trip you are trying to complete. There are so many things to see along the way. We want to prepare content on that part of Spain, but there's nothing ready yet. As for the rental car companies, we always go for the big ones. Avis, Hertz, Eurocar, Sixth. You cannot go wrong with them. Sandra, hi Tony, how are you? We're traveling to Seville. Will there be a quality show somewhere where we can also dine? We know flamenco shows with dinner are very popular among tourists, but usually either the quality of the show or the quality of the food is not up to standard. So we would rather advise you to focus exclusively on a flamenco show no food involved, and then you have dinner wherever you fancy. Karen, hello, what would be the best place to exchange US dollars? Karen, uh, we would avoid the currency exchanges at the airports. We would look for a currency exchange in the center of town. Spain receives millions of tourists per year, and all the big major cities have plenty of services where you will be able to get euros. Norma, um, we want to go to some places outside Barcelona like Girona or Montserrat. Do I have to buy the train tickets in advance or can I decide when is the best day? We will go in the spring. Hi Norma, in the case of Montserrat, you can buy it a few days in advance once you have a clear idea of when you want to go. As for Girona, if you are going on a high-speed train, there's quite a lot of demand for that service. So we would not wait that long, uh, perhaps try 15 two, week, two weeks, one week before travel to secure your seats. Freddy, we are traveling to Madrid. How far in advance do we buy the train tickets to Toledo? 
or another high speed train question, very, very similar. The thing with the Madrid to Toledo high speed train is that everyone doing the day trip to Toledo wants to go on the same early train and the number of seats is limited. So do not wait till the very last minute. Who knows, try to buy one week, three, four days in advance to make sure you get seats for the train you want to ride on. Harmon, recently used your previous videos to drive through Andalusia in a rented car. We were rear-ended by an elderly gentleman when we were waiting for our turn to enter the roundabout. What should we have done when in an accident? Appreciate your inputs here. Hi Harmon, uh, sorry to hear about the incident. In the case of an accident, it is absolutely essential that you fill a form known as parte amistoso de accidente. All cars should have such form along with the car documents. The parte is an accident report where all the details of the accident are registered and then signed by both parties, each one keeping a copy of the form. The insurance company will want to see a copy of that form. Diana, good morning. It's it possible to make a return trip from Madrid to Bilbao? No, it's not possible. I mean, you could fly. By train, it will take you between eight, nine hours to go and return. It's not feasible, don't do it. Go somewhere else. Plenty of beautiful places around Madrid, okay? Edward, excellent series of videos as always. Thank you, Edward. We are flying from Miami and arriving in Madrid via T4S at 7.45 a.m. Would it be too risky time-wise to book a train from Chamartin at 10.15 a.m.? Edward, our advice as laid out on our video with 10 tips to make the most of the high-speed train in Spain is to leave at least a buffer of four hours between the estimated arrival time of your flight and the departure time of your train. Quite likely you can make that connection in a shorter period of time, but we did that in the past and we nearly lost a train. Since then, we always leave four hours. San Martin is closer to the airport than Atocha, so three hours and a half might be a safe amount of time. Adrian wants to know, when will you do a video about Ibiza, Ibiza? Well, when we get the chance to return to the island. We've been to Ibiza before we had the channel. We will have to return to record images. It's in our bucket list, but it will have to wait. Sarah, Tony, I'm traveling in March with my parents. I would like to know what you recommend to visit uh, with a person who cannot walk much. Thank you very much for your videos. Thank you, Sarah. For a person who cannot walk too much, the golden rule, the golden tip would be dedicate twice as much time to each place you're going to visit as if you didn't have any mobility issues. So for instance, if we say spend at least one full day in Toledo, double that amount of time, spend two days. That's a way you will be able to see everything at a slower pace. That DAT, uh, since we are a couple nearly 70 years old, it is difficult for us to climb uphill upstairs. We love to see the city of Seven Hills, Lisbon, by foot. Could you make a video of uh, how to take the public transportation to the top of the hills, then walk downhill by foot? Food, my best regards. We will shortly have a video on the top attractions in Lisbon and a bit later we will have another video with the best viewpoints in Lisbon where we will point how to get to each one of them. So you will have to wait a bit for that information. Carl, good morning Tony. We would like to include Valencia in our itinerary. And we would like to ask you if you know if there is a train that will take us from Madrid to Toledo, then from there to Valencia. Carl, no, there is no direct train from Toledo to Valencia. From Toledo, you will always have to go back to Madrid and there take a train to Valencia. It's not the end of the world. It's quite simple. That's what we would do. All key says, hola, Tony. First of all, thank you very much for your exceptionally well thought out and presented videos. 
Thank you, Oki. We'll stay close to Plaza de Catalunya and would like to use Passe de Gracia train station for our day trips to Pubol and Cadaqués in the first days of May. I read online that the station has many entrances. One of them is across Casa Badio. Where are the others? Two related questions. Is the schedule on Renfe website for trains stopping at Passe de Gracia valid? Or can it change closer to May? And can tickets to these trains be bought online? Well, hello there. The entrance to the railway station are all in or around Aragon Street, including the one in front of Casa Badio. But the train will not take you to either Pubo or Cadaqués. You will have to combine train and buses. In our opinion, a day trip to Cadaqués is pushing things a bit too far. Too many hours on the road for a very short stay in Cadaqués. And now a couple of questions that keep coming back. One of them is, uh, I'm trying to find tickets for such and such trip. Can I find anything? What's going on? Well, we're talking about high-speed train tickets mainly. The thing is, we never know when Renfe, one of the train operators, is going to put the tickets in the system. Sometimes they are sold six months in advance, sometimes six weeks in advance. There is no way we can tell. The important thing is that you should know that if you cannot find tickets for a given route, check earlier dates to see if that train is effectively operating. If it exists, then the only thing you can do is wait till the tickets are made available by the train operator. And the other question we get often is about transport zones in Barcelona. People are researching public transport tickets in Barcelona and they come across the issue of travel zones. Zone 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Well, you do not need to worry with that because the entire city of Barcelona and some of the neighboring towns are all within zone 1. So all the tourist attractions in Barcelona are covered by zone 1. And that was the video for today, our second Q&A video. You have a question for us, would like an answer some, somewhere sometime around mid-April, leave it in the commentary box below. And we will continue seeing you here in the channel. See you soon.